Hey guys, welcome back. Randall here with Cooking Under Pressure. We're a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching you how to use your pressure cooker, whether it's an Instapot or a Power Pressure Cooker XL, any pressure cooker that you have. We're giving you all the recipes that you can cook with. And today, we are going out of our comfort zone. It is a dessert, believe it or not. I love desserts. I hardly bake at all, maybe Toll House cookies. Uh, from the little canister that you buy, but that's all I can pretty much do. We are bringing you cheesecake in the Instapot. It is a dark chocolate covered peanut butter cheesecake. I love desserts. I know you do too. I'm the guy at the end of the night at a restaurant when they say, hey, do you want dessert? Everyone puts their menus down. I say, absolutely. Love sweets. Gonna share this recipe with you today. I've looked all over the internet to find different unique ingredients for a cheesecake and I've adopted and adapted. I've never done this before. We're gonna try it out today. We're gonna bring it to you. This cheesecake, peanut butter, dark chocolate. Can't wait to share it with you coming up next. So this recipe is in a couple of different phases. We're going to start out with the crust, then we're going to do the filling, and then at the end we will do the dark chocolate topping. So the crust, I used an Oreo cookie and I ground it up in my Nutribullet. As you can see, it actually works pretty easily in the Nutribullet. I used that to ground all the cookies up. And what you have to do once you've ground them up, you pour in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. So we'll put that in and we're just going to mix that up. This is going to be the crust that goes right in your cheesecake pan. So we'll quickly mix this up. It is two tablespoons of butter and I actually used 12 cookies. So you can use a couple more if you want. As you can see the pan here, it is a six inch by three inch pan that we are going to use. And this pan is by Fat daddy -O. You can get it on Amazon. But what's nice about it is it has a little pop-out bottom so you can easily pop that out and take the cheesecake out. I've got a piece of parchment paper that'll make it easier in the end and I just cut it into a little circle. So we'll put that in. Most importantly, some Pam. Make sure you spray the bottom and spray all the sides with Pam or any kind of spray. And that will make it much easier to get the cheesecake out. So make sure that parchment paper is right there in the bottom. Remember folks, it's the first time that we've tried this, so hopefully it'll work out and it'll be super tasty. So we just dump in the Oreo cookie crust and we will Press that along the bottom so you can see that. This crust is really going to taste good because it's got the peanut butter filling mixed in with it. So just covers the bottom of this six inch pan. And what you can do is you can kind of make little ridges. You can kind of push it up on the side if you want because it'll end up looking really cool at the end. But you just push that down. And a trick is take a cup. See, I got my seminal cup here. And you just push it down gently to flatten it. And that'll make it nice and flat on the bottom of this pie pan. So that looks actually pretty good. And I'm just gonna kind of swirl the tops up just a little bit. 
And at this point, what we'll do is we will put this in the freezer for approximately 15 minutes while we are making our filling. And so everything will come together. Okay, we've got the crust in the freezer to firm up a little bit. And now let's make our peanut butter cheesecake filling. So, of course, what do we start out with? Philadelphia cream cheese. We have two bars that are eight ounces, eight ounces each. So we're gonna go with 16 ounces. And with all of these ingredients, I have let them sit for about an hour out of the fridge, any of the ones that were in the fridge, to soften them. You don't want something that's too cold or you might get a clumpy filling. So we're gonna start out with the uh, 16 ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese. Next up, We've got, you can use creamy pe peanut butter. You know, I, any recipe that I use, I always use the whipped peanut butter. It just seems like it's creamier. Um, creamier than creamy. It's actually called whipped. And that is one cup of whipped peanut butter. So we'll put that in the mixture. One cup. Next up, we have two eggs, put the two eggs in, and they have been sitting out just for a little while. So we're gonna start to blend that in a little bit, just kind of mix that. So that is two eggs, one cup of peanut butter, and 16 ounces of cream cheese. Now, a lot of the recipes I've seen, you can use half a cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of powdered sugar. So I'm going with a quarter cup of granulated sugar and a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And I know the powdered sugar will make it even a little bit more creamier. So let's try that. You can see that's starting to come together nicely. We are gonna use our mixer for this in a second, but I just wanted to get those ingredients set up. We have some heavy cream. This is a quarter cup of heavy cream. We are going to put in two tablespoons of cornstarch, which will hopefully keep it just thick enough, but not clumpy. So we'll put in two tablespoons of cornstarch. A lot of people use vanilla, but me being from New England, why would I throw vanilla in there when I have maple syrup? So I'm putting in one tablespoon of maple syrup. You know this is gonna taste good, folks. And last but not least, just a little bit of my Himalayan pink salt, probably about a teaspoon. So a teaspoon of the Himalayan sea salt. So we're just gonna blend that together. And let's get our mixer and we'll put this through the mixer. Some people put it through a blender or a food processor. I've got a mixer here, so let's do the mixer. We'll put it on low and we'll get all of this mixed up. So as I mentioned, we put this on low and just start to Blend that and mix it together. Oh, perfectly. See that velvety consistency? That is what you're looking for. Make sure you get everything off the bottom. Okay, we have taken our crust out of the freezer. It's nice and firmed up. Now we are going to put the filling inside of the pie pan or the cheesecake pan. So gently, you can see how velvety that is. We are going to gently pour all of that filling. That is perfect. Scrape the sides a little bit. Let's move that over here. And we're just going to make sure it's equal all the way across. 
So we'll just kind of swirl that around. You can see that consistency is perfect. Alrighty, three inch, six inch by three inch pan. All right, the last step, we have a small wire trivet inside the pressure cooker and I'm gonna add one cup of water. And as you can see, my silicone trivet that I often use, be easy to pull this cheesecake pan out. And what we're gonna do to keep the moisture out of the top of the cheesecake, we're gonna put a paper towel and then just wrap the top of it in foil. And we'll close that up and drop that straight into the Instapot. Tuck that in there and we'll close that up. Okay, we're gonna set our Instapot to 45 minutes. I've seen some recipes online that are 30, some that are 60, so I just decided 45 would be good. So I actually have a cake button which goes to 40 and we'll just pump it up to 45 and we will do 45 minutes and then we'll do a 10 minute natural release and then we'll do a forced release after the 10 minutes. So we're already up to pressure. The cheesecake is cooking and our cocktail of the day, Mayomi Pinot Noir. One of my favorites, absolutely my wife's favorite. This is a velvety, creamy, buttery red wine. It's a Pinot Noir. Goes perfect with this cheesecake that's gonna have that nice dark chocolate on the top of it. Again, it's from Monterey County. I have a lot of great wines out of Monterey County. I got family in Monterey County. My nieces, Sienna and Ashley, love you guys. Hope you're doing well out there, hanging out near Pebble Beach. Monterey County wine, Mayomi, awesome wine. Enjoy it with this great cheesecake. Okay, the cook was for 45 minutes. We let it do a natural release for 10 minutes. And now we are going to open up our Instapot. Make sure safety, you can see the steam coming out. So use a towel or a mitt. And let's take out, you can see the silicone trivet is perfect for taking this out. And what we're gonna do is drop it right on that rack. So let's zoom over here. And I'll probably keep this mitt on just because it's a little bit hot. And we'll take off the foil and the paper towel. Hopefully it won't Oh, look at that, perfect. That is exactly what I was hoping it would look like. We're gonna let this sit on this cooling rack uh, for about an hour, and then what we'll do, we'll do a quick cover on it, and we will put it in the fridge overnight. Now you can do it for four to six hours, and it'll still come out fine, but what I wanna do is check it overnight. So we're gonna let it cool, for an hour, cover it up, and then pop it into the refrigerator overnight. At that point, we'll put the dark chocolate on top of it, put some yummy Reese's on the top as well, cut a slice, and taste this beautiful cheesecake. Welcome back. Okay, our cheesecake has been in the fridge overnight and it looks great. It's even shrunk a little bit, so it should be easy to pop out. The first thing we are going to do is heat up some awesome semi-sweet chunks and mix them with a little bit of heavy cream to make a real tasty and thick ganache that's gonna go on the top of that. So we'll have a chocolate ganache that goes on top of the cheesecake. Let's go do that right now. So to make the ganache, we have the 
chocolate chunks, the semi-sweet chocolate chunks. We've got about a cup of the chunks and we just add in half a cup of heavy whipping cream and we pop it into the microwave for 30 second intervals. And check it every 30 seconds, should be done in about a minute and a half, probably about two minutes. And as you can see, in about a minute and 45 seconds, the ganache comes out perfectly. Nice and silky, creamy, ready to pour on that cheesecake. All right, we have our beautiful velvety ganache that we're gonna pour over the cheesecake. Now, as I mentioned, this was overnight, so it shrunk a little bit, which is great because what I can do is just push up through the bottom to pop out the cheesecake. If you only leave it in the fridge for four hours because you want to have it that night, what you can do is you can take a can, um, a small can of corn or something like that. If you have this type of fat daddy-o uh, pie pan, a cheesecake pan, and you just push down on it and the cheesecake will come straight up. But fortunately, in my case, you can see I can just push that cheesecake right through. Look at that beautiful cheesecake. And I have a nice bracelet right here. And we can look at gorgeous crust, perfect cheesecake. We'll put that right there for now. Wipe off my hands. And we also have the bottom with the parchment paper on this cheesecake. So what we will do is just slip a spatula underneath and just give it a little twist and that should come right up like that. And you can see it did. We'll pull off that metal bottom with the parchment paper like so, and there is your peanut butter cheesecake. Let's get that out of the way. Looking awesome at this point. I'm really excited. As you know, this is my first try. Thanks to all those recipes I saw on the internet and all of the unique styles of making a cheesecake. Now what I'm gonna do, because I purposely took the Pyrex with a pouring spout. I'm just going to gently pour just a little bit on the top here just to cover the top. And we're just going to spread that around. Look at how beautiful that is. Just pour some more on there. Spread that around the top. Nice chocolatey ganache. Perfect We'll paint that right on top. It's just the right consistency. We'll add just a little bit more. And you can see how gorgeous that looks. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. Now what we can do is we can just pour a little bit over the sides. Give it a little bit of a look. Just down the edges there. And oh. Gosh, I think we're gonna put a little bit more on top. Who doesn't like chocolate ganache? I'll be licking the spatula. And we'll put that right over here. And there you have it, the gorgeous peanut butter chocolate ganache cheesecake. To finish it off, what we will do is we will add some mini Reese's. So I've got some milk chocolate mini Reese's. We're just gonna pepper on the top there. And I have some white chocolate ones. So it's a nice little blend. And we'll just kind of pour those over. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, yummy. Move those around a little bit, mix them up. Put some more over here. And then last but not least, 
this works good with the mini ones because this is actually a pretty small cheesecake. So kind of move those around a little bit. These are stuck together. That's looking good. And I also bought some mini Reese's Pieces to just pop on top. This kind of gives it a little bit of a Halloween look since it's October. But there you have it. Our beautiful peanut butter chocolate ganache cheesecake. Now we're going to let this sit for a couple minutes and I'll take a bite and we'll see how good it really is. All right, this cut perfectly. Look at that nice cut. I can't wait to try this. Let's see if this worked out. We get a little bit of that Oreo cookie crust. Oh, so creamy, tender, not tender, just very, very soft and creamy like cheesecake should be. Mm. Cheesecake Factory, watch out. This is as good as a New York cheesecake. Wow. In the Instapot, peanut butter and chocolate ganache cheesecake. If you are a cheesecake lover, the Instapot makes it nice and moist, creamy and smooth inside. Give this recipe a try. Folks, thanks for joining me today. This was an experience and an experiment. First time out, we went out of the box a little bit, but I think if you look at this cheesecake, it looks really good and it tastes even better. So I hope you try it. You can try it maybe with pumpkin, you can do it with strawberries, however you wanna do it. This is a peanut butter cheesecake. Go out there and uh, don't be afraid to take a risk. Thanks for joining me today, folks. Be safe out there, look out for one another, and as always, if you ain't cooking under pressure, you ain't cooking. We'll see you next time.